morning everyone and welcome to day three of the Murakami Marathon. But today is actually a day that I plan on taking a little bit of a break from Murakami reading, which you might be like, Kate, this is literally the Murakami Marathon, why are you taking a break? Um, and that is because I've actually talked about this a couple of times, especially in my How I Read So Much video, and that is basically the fact that I think one of the reasons that I don't get in book slumps and reading slumps like other people on booktube who are reading a lot is because I like mix up my reading so much. I read everything. I read everything from like, I mean, I try to read YA fantasy. It hasn't been working recently, but I try to read it. Um, I read YA fantasy. I read adult romance. I read adult contemporary. I read Murakami. I read modern classics. I read classics. So my reading is so diverse. I feel like I'm always on my toes and I don't really get like sick of reading because I'm not bored. Because honestly, I think that's half of the reason that people get in reading slumps is that they get bored of reading. So today I do have a plan to take a bit of a break from Murakami. I am going to be kind of going in the complete opposite direction. I'm going to be reading a YA fantasy. If you guys have been on this channel for a little bit, you probably know that I kind of wanted to take a break from YA fantasy for a little while, but I got an audiobook in that I have been waiting for for months, and that is the first book in the Revenant Chronicles, Revenant series. It's called The Kiss of Deception. Anyone on booktube has heard of this book, and I put it on hold ages ago, and I completely forgot that I still had it on hold when I kind of was like giving up on YA fantasy last month so I am going to read that just because I have been waiting for that audiobook for a really long time and it looks like the wait is still going to be really long. So that is kind of the plans for today, taking a little bit of a break from Murakami because again I don't like getting burned out and even though he's my third author and I want to say oh I could read him forever and I do think I could, I do need a little bit of a break in between some of his books. I might not be reading Murakami, but I have my Murakami bag. everyone so I just got out of work I'm currently driving home obviously uh, but I wanted to update you guys on what I read today and the different discussions and all of that first off the day three discussion question was do you use audiobooks and are you listening to any for the Murakami Marathon I personally started an audiobook today um, so first off my original plan was to actually take a break from Murakami, as I mentioned this morning. I was going to read The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. Um, yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> Basically, I don't know, I just did not... I don't know, I have not been really enjoying why fantasy recently. I really haven't just enjoyed fantasy in a while. And this is a YA fantasy, and I honestly only started listening to it because I'd waited like two months to get in on audiobook, and I didn't feel like waiting again to try this book. So I just gave it a shot, and I DNF'd it at like 13%. Um, basically, yeah, again, this is a YA fantasy. It's very, very tropey, very YA fantasy, like kind of typical. Um, the big thing that I was interested with in this book, I apparently just very misunderstood, was that I thought the whole thing was that 
you didn't know who the assassin and the prince are in this book. And apparently, like, the... Oh, my God. There was a little baby turtle back there. Oh, no! I just stopped. Ah! Oh, I hope he's okay. Oh, no! Oh, my God. I want to go back and help the turtle. He was right on the side of the road. Holy shit. No, baby turtle. But yeah, so I thought that the mystery in this book was basically that you didn't know who the assassin and the prince are. And literally I start reading it and at the beginning of every chapter it tells you this is the assassin, this is the prince. And I'm like, what? what? Um, and I texted a couple of people and a couple of people commented on my update on Goodreads that apparently like once they both meet the girl, because apparently she does come across both of them, um, she like calls them by name and you don't know the name of the assassin or the prince or something like that and I was like well this is a lot stupider than I thought it was <laughs> I don't know I was like excited for this like kind of mystery aspect to it like not knowing who was the prince and who was the assassin and everything and also I feel like I feel like I personally heard some people say that it's very predictable I know Haley said that she guessed it so so, I DNF'd that pretty early on in the day and honestly was just like kind of frustrated and didn't want to sign another audio. So I listened to music a lot today. I've been um, playing Don't Need Your Love by NCT Dream and Harvey on repeat because it is such a good song. Um, I'm listening to my Exo CD right now because my phone is like almost dead and it's charging. I can't listen to music and charge at the same time. Um, but... Yeah, so I started Men Without Women, the short story collection that I picked out to be my new to me Murakami book. Um, so far, I think I've gone through three and a half. I give the first two, no, I think I've gone through four. I think I give the first two three stars, the, then one two stars, and then five stars. Um, this collection, I don't know, I personally am just like, I really don't care about short story collections. I kind of hate short story collections. I really hate short stories. I find that they're too short for me to get anything out of, and it's either like, what was the point of that? Or it's like shoving its meaning down your throat because, again, it's only like 20 pages or something. So, um, I definitely felt that with the first three in this. I found one to, uh, one or two of them to be like, okay, that was pointless. See, I can't remember how many there were. Um, a couple to be kind of like, okay, what was the point of that? And then one to be very, like, shoving in your face. Literally, like, so the moral of the story is... And then the last one I read, which was Shuka Shaka Zara, something like that. And it takes... Uh, inspiration from the thousand and one Arabian Nights tale of the woman who tells the story to the man to like stay alive um that whole thing and that one was really cool I thought that that one was a very good mix of very weird classic weird Murakami uh and just like a very interesting story that one was I really thought was entertaining um and that's basically what I thought of the short story collection so far Again, I am not a short story collection person at all. Um, but also something I wanted to chat about while I'm driving is the... I've had quite a few questions pop up about After Dark in our Twitter and Instagram conversation. So if you're in one of them and I talk about a question, it might come from the other group chat because there are two. Because quite a few people like didn't have the other one, so we made two. Um, so first off, a lot of people seem to be kind of confused about Shirakawa who is the businessman in After Dark. He is the man who beats up the Chinese woman, and he's the one who like buys milk and stuff. People seem a little bit confused about his timeline, who he is, what his purpose is. So Shirakawa is the man who beats up the Chinese woman, and then he goes back to his office. We see a scene of him at his office, um, and him thinking about his family and then he has like these pencils and stuff and that's the same office that um Ari the sister who's asleep is like finds herself in but like it being completely empty and she finds one of those pencils from the company so that's a connection to make and then Shirakawa uh 
he has the phone conversation with his wife, he goes to the convenience store, he buys a snack and milk, he drinks it, and then he gets in a taxi and afterwards, like a little while later, and gets milk and then goes home. Um, also, at one point, he's sitting there looking at the Chinese woman's items that he stole from her. Um, that is all the same person. That is all Shirakawa, who is... I, I, one person showed up was like, do I need to understand the businessman plotline? And I personally... Like, there, it's definitely he's an important part of the story, but also, like, he's not, like, the main part of the story. Uh, I personally think Shirakawa, because, wait, someone asked, um, someone asked if we ever really find out who beat up the Chinese woman, and I personally do think it was just, it was Shirakawa, because, like, he has her clothes and everything, but it is kind of weirdly written in this way that he's talking about himself, but very detached, very, like, dissociative, if I'm completely honest, that's what read like to me, um, that he was looking at these items that he took from this Chinese woman and looking at them as though someone else had taken them and done this deed. So it is a little bit confusingly written just in that sense, um, but it is Shirakawa who beats up the Chinese woman and is cheating on his wife and all of that. And he is also the one who leaves the cell phone in the convenience store that the um, Takahashi and the convenience store clerk, they pick it up and the person is saying like, you can't hide, like we will find you, all of that. That is all Shirakawa. Now, his importance is definitely up for debate. I personally do not, a lot of people make the theory that he is the man with no face. I personally do not think that. I think Shirakawa is kind of our, our Murakami wandering character, um, if that makes sense. Like, I think he's kind of there to be there and to like purposely confuse the reader like straight up just confuse the reader but also i think his importance in after dark in particular and the reason i think he's in after dark and not a different book is because after dark although it is obviously about mari and eri and takahashi and these characters um they it's also just about tokyo after dark it's about everything that's happening in Tokyo at nighttime. So that's why we get Kaoru and the people who work at the Love Hotel. We also get their point of view for a little while there. Because as I said before, I believe that we are supposed to be a security camera who's kind of like looking in on these situations. So I think Shirakawa, we just kind of see him because he was involved in something that happened in the book as in he's the one who beat up the Chinese woman but he's also just in Tokyo at nighttime. So that is personally my kind of analysis I guess of Shirakawa because I do I, I did kind of miss talking about him in my discussion um, on day one because he, he is a weird character he is one that is kind of confusing and is kind and it's kind of just like what is his purpose because if he's not the man with no face then what's the point of him and i think that is kind of just like a loose end it's kind of one of those questions unless you sat down with murakami and asked him i don't know if you're ever going to find out the answer you can believe he's the man with no face um you can believe like what you want but personally that is my analysis of it is that he's kind of there as just another person experiencing after dark so yeah, that was that's my analysis of it. Again, that's that's just my opinions. Uh, feel free to disagree. You can kind of think whatever you want because again, it's all speculation at this point. I was talking to um, one of our Twitter group chat members, Adele, about Winderbird Chronicle and giving her my ideas on just like certain things and what they mean, um, such as like if people have read the Wind of Bird Chronicle, the mark that Tango gets. Um, and I was giving her all my ideas, but her ideas were completely different because Murakami is 90% speculation. Anyone who's watched my 1Q84 review um, and goes into the spoiler sections knows that not like half of my review is just questions. So Murakami, I think that's the fun of him is that it's so unknown and it does just leave you hanging. I personally am someone who adores books like that, that you don't get all of the answers, 
and books that are left a little bit loose. Um, but yeah, so that's my analysis of Shirakawa because that was definitely um, a couple of people asked questions about him in both group chats. So I figured I would address my take on Shirakawa in this video. But yeah, so I am going to go home. Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna read when I get home if I'm completely honest. I kind of just want to read Recursion by Blake Crutch because <laughs> I didn't read last night. Oh, I was like too... I was watching NCT Dream stuff and I just got too into it and I, I could not read. So if I do end up doing anything else, I will update you guys when I do. Woo! Alright, so I just got home, I made a cup of tea, I'm gonna go upstairs and not read any more Hercule Murakami. So, I'm going to end this vlog here. I hope you guys all enjoyed day three and definitely discuss everything I talked about down in the comments below. Oh wait, we haven't gotten any cat footage. Here's my cat being really annoying all the time. Ben, do you have anything to say? Do you like Hercule Murakami? Ben, please tell the audience what you think. Yeah? <laughs> Good. Okay. He agrees. Hurricane Murakami is great because he likes cats. But yeah. Anyways, I'm going to leave the vlog here and I love you all and I'll see you all soon. Bye. Yeah, thanks, Ben. <laughs>